Hey everyone, let me walk you through how to, at least the first part of this project where we will create a new doc, import a Word document, reset letting, turn on some features that might not already be turned on, and then add a uh, few paragraph styles, some character styles, and get you on your way to stylizing this text. So here we go. The first thing I'm going to do is create a new document. and under print, likely you can find one that will say something to the effect of half a letter. This will get you started. We want our page size to be five and a half by eight and a half. I'm going to get rid of column and any margins. And I am going to throw on, maybe just out of habit more than anything, a bleed so that if we want to incorporate imagery later, 0.125 inches, we can do so. And I'll click Create. And relative to our most recent project, the first thing I'm going to do is come up to my master page elements. I'm going to double click on that to take me to master page view and I'm going to select both of them. I'm going to add a 9 over 9 grid, the old Yon Cheech old trick as we discussed in class. And if you're so inclined, you're not sure how that's going to show up, you can hit preview, we'll click OK. And then the next thing I'm going to do after that is begin to shape the page. And again, as we discussed in class, you all can do this as you see fit and how it references how the user is going to maybe engage with the text and hold the form of the book and everything. For right now, I'm just going to go with an asymmetrical layout of a 1, 1, 1, 2. I'm going to make a text box relative to that and then copy that same one over to this page. Right now, we should have two. And show you when I make the guides disappear, you can see right there, I'll shrink this a bit so that you can actually see the document view. Now that I have these two text blocks, I want to click this one on the left and make the verso side the primary text flow. So it's going left to right, and then I'm going to click the overflow text box once, and you can see that I made that selection evidenced by the cursor change and I'm going to drag it over to the other text box and when I do I get this chain link meaning that these two boxes are linked in terms of overflow and if you want to see that made manifest you can go to view extras and then show text threads it's option command Y as a shortcut and you can see that these two are linked so now when I return to my document view, I have a single page with a locked master page element by way of that text box. Now I need to place something into it. It's irrelevant that it's locked. InDesign is smart enough to know that when you're placing content, you may want to place it into a master page element. So we can um, simply add content by going to File, Place, or Command D as the shortcut. And as we discussed in class, you'll have created kind of a custom version of the uh, emoji text that we discussed. In my case it is, or should be, right here. So this is the one I modified after er, editing down the 10 part section that I gave you all a link to. And I want to make sure that show import options are selected. And I'm going to click open and it might take a second depending on the length of the text and the speed of your processor but you'll eventually be confronted with this dialog box and you don't really need to change much in here it's just most important that you know that this is an option that you can in fact map word document styles to paragraph styles in InDesign and that more seamlessly you can kind of transition from one doc to a more uh, fluid type setting. This is particularly useful if you're getting several documents from the same editor and everything, but for us the only thing we want to ensure um, that's on is uh, footnotes and or endnotes. So we'll click OK. 
And just like when I place any matter into InDesign, there's going to be a little indicator that that's what I'm doing via the cursor. And when I move in, it's a subtle shift, but um, when I move into this text box, it's letting me know that that's something I can place content into by way of the cursor change. And so I'm going to make a single click. And there is my content. Now it's going to look a little funky because we went from Google Doc to Microsoft Word Doc by way of an HTML document. So I am going to have to immediately change a few things. Um, before I do that though, I'm going to turn on Show Hidden Characters. It's under Type and this will show all the kind of weird spacing issues and stuff uh, by way of kind of light blue symbols. I'll show you what I mean in a second. So when we turn those on you can see the paragraph returns. This can be really helpful in identifying why a text is behaving weirdly. Uh, in our case, it's just really compressed leading. If you can see when I place the cursor, it's 11 point type over 0 points of lead, which is leading to these really condensed lines. And so what I want to do is put my cursor in there, hit Command-A for Control-All, and then I'm going to come up here and I'm going to give it leading of 12. And while I've got it all selected, I'm going to make it 10 point type. And now we have something that is much more readable, obviously, uh, and capable of being kind of edited or um, identifiable in terms of missing characters, issues that we might be having that came in with Word, etc. So if you go through these, the first thing you may notice is that we have a lot of um, tofu, to use some typographic parlance, these missing characters right here. Now, not all of these are going to be emoji, but if you reference a text that we started with, the bulk of them are, and that's because most emoji are set in its own type base, and right now we're currently using Arial. So these, for instance, are missing because Arial uh, does not have emoji. So we need to go through and change these all to Apple Color Emoji is the type base we'll be using if you're on a Mac. It might be slightly different if you're on a PC. And as I discussed, you can, as I discussed in class rather, you can go through and select all these and then change them one at a time. But that becomes super problematic uh, over the course of a very long document. And that's kind of the mental model we're working with, even though this might only be 24 pages, whatever it was, 240 or 400. And so um, we're going we're gonna to discuss a better way. Now, in a separate video that I'll link to in the comments, I'll show you all how to add this particular um, script, but InDesign basically is capable of adding custom JavaScripts and executing those, and we're making use of one um, called Missing Glyphs, and so I'll show you how that behaves. If you need to get to the script panel, it's under Window, Utilities, Scripts, it's Shift, Command, sorry, maybe that's Option, Command, F11. Um, and it'll pull this up if your user folder is compressed. You need to expand it and um, then double click on the missing glyphs. It'll pull up this dialog box and so we want to, at this moment, this is obviously going to misattribute some of the other missing characters to apple color emoji, but we'll deal with those in a second. Uh, we're going to select replace missing glyphs with apple color emoji and click OK. And you'll see that many of these changed. Some of these, uh, again, won't. These are kind of errant characters. Some of these you'll have to manually clean up, but within those couple of clicks, we just swapped out many of those, almost all of those missing characters for the correct ones. Now that is all applied locally, though. So the problem with that, as, we, uh, as we've already seen, is that when I highlight this, and change this back to a more preferred text, maybe Arial Regular again. Those go back to being Tofu. So we need to apply global styling to that by way of a character style. So I'll show you how to do that. There's two ways. You can preemptively set up the character style by creating a new character style right here and then selecting it in the Find Change box or what I usually do because I'm kind of lazy and oftentimes forget that I need to set it up before I go with this is go to edit 
find change or command F from here on out. And I'm going to search for, under basic character formats, apple color emoji. And then I'm going to change it into a yet to be determined character style. And I'm going to do that by selecting this drop down under style options, click new character style. And I'll call this emoji. And I'm going to change this. And I'm going to click OK. And again, this may seem like a subtle change. Like, why would we need to change localized styling uh, to something that's a character style when really it's not going to make any visual difference? And that's so that when we do start to manipulate the type to better serve kind of the needs of our reader and everything, we don't lose, we don't overwrite this. InDesign respects character styles before it does paragraph styles and it totally disregards localized styling when you make those kind of global changes and so this is our way of letting InDesign know yeah we really actually do want to stick with that particular typeface by way of the emoji or apple color emoji so we're gonna click OK and I'm gonna click find next this is kind of in the way um, in fact I'll just put my cursor in here at the start click find next and it's probably hiding behind, there we go, there's the quintessential pager. And I'm going to click change. And that's, in this case, not really going to do anything visual, like I mentioned, but it is changing it into our preferred font. So I'm going to click change all, and it's going to make all 38 replacements. That is, by and large, how you're going to handle uh, change from localized styling to character styling. So I'm going to click done and we have those and now just to find that same paragraph. If I were to highlight this and then change this paragraph via paragraph styles we would be changing the uh, typeface of Arial without affecting these emoji. I'll give you one more example of how we would do that uh, before we move on into the next video. So I'm going to pull up Find and Change again, Command F, and we're going to identify all the italics that have been locally styled via Word. And so we don't lose those, we're going to apply a new character style of italics. So I will run through, and it is functionally the same. This is the same process, whether we're switching on a font family or a font style. I just want to look for all italics within this document. And I'm going to click OK. And then I want to replace those with a character style. So I'm going to click New Character Style. I'm going to make sure that it's based on None. I don't want it to be italicizing emoji or something like that. Um, so I'm going to Italics. And under Font Style, Italic. And I'm going to click OK. Find Next. There it is. Change. And again, we're not going to see evidence of that right now. It'll only be when we start to manipulate our body copy typeface, whatever that may be for you. There it is again. So I'm going to hit change all, 79 replacements, just like that. You're going to love that. So there are many more to do for that. There's small caps, there is underlined text, there is um, superscripts by way of these endnote markers, and I'll show you how to do that because that's a little more complicated with the grep. But for now, uh, you should do that for all the kind of plain. Uh, formatting, uh, localized formatting that you want to shift into uh, character style so that we can begin to style this globally. Make sure to do that and then we'll check in on the next video which is linked in the comments below.